So Josh, as, as I was mentioning before we get on here, you and I have met, but I'm sure back at Tennessee, you're doing national games every week, so you're always meeting with the TV announcers. But after every time we did a Tennessee game, they always would provide you, and we'd always walk away like, okay, that guy's a stud. <laughs> that guy's smart, and obviously you're a terrific player at Tennessee. Um, first of all, I, you're wearing a hat that says Astro Dobbs. Yeah. Can you fill me in? Yeah, so um, during my time at Tennessee, I obviously studied aerospace engineering. And so um, I got like two nicknames, like Astro, Astro Dobbs, and then like Pastronaut, which has been going around um, a lot lately. So I started just a um, little brand around Astro Dobbs and started my foundation around it to Extraordinary Dobbs Foundation. So I always rock the hat, um, obviously, because it's, you know, me and it's sure. like my passions and everything. It's cool seeing like the support and people start rocking the hats too as well. I was going to say, is this starting to blow up now with the way you've been playing and the way things are going? Yeah, people are starting to cop the hats. This one's actually brand new, so I got to add it to my site. So I just started, I just got a couple new hats in for this season. So I got some new drops coming coming along. So I'll be sure to keep everyone posted. All right, so if we want to get them, where do we go to get them? You go to astrodobs.com. All right. uh, it's on my Instagram, TikTok, uh, Twitter, um, astrodobs.com, and everything's right there. Okay, I'm going to get myself one. Yes, sir. So my one of my daughters is um, in a serious relationship. My guess is they're going to get married, and he is an aerospace engineer. Okay. Is this like slam dunk husband material, <laughs> being it an aerospace engineer? has to be, man. I don't, <laughs> I don't know where he works or who he works for. He went to ASU, where you almost went. Yeah, I almost went to ASU. I'm guessing, is he... Is he um I'm guessing he wants to get his pilot's license, or does he have his pilot's I, license? I, that, it's above my pay grade. Yeah. I, I was a broadcast major, so I, I, I don't know. Okay, well, she might she might be a, a frequent uh, po- private pilot at some point, I'm sure. Good, uh, I could use that. I mean, yeah. I have to have, sometimes get from the college game to the Cardinals game, sometimes tough. Exactly, exactly. It's very useful. So, but yeah, no, being an aerospace engineer, definitely husband material, without a doubt. So you, you interned at NASA. What was your day like when you interned there? It was crazy. So um, that was back in 2019. And so I spent a month down there at Kennedy Space Center. So I actually did it twice, 2019, right bef- uh, 2020, right before covid um, so I would basically show up to the VAB, Vertical Assembly Building. So, like, you know, the old shuttle pictures, like you see the shuttle rolling out, the big, tall building that looks like it's out of the Transformers. I would show up, like, that was like, I had an office in there. So I'd show up to that building every day. And basically, I would meet with a different engineer who was working on the mobile launcher, and I would shadow them and see what they do. So a lot of it was kind of in, like, the instrumentation division of – Um, what NASA was doing. So the mobile launcher is what carries the rocket from that VAB, Vertical Assembly Building, out to the launch pad. And so the mobile mobile launcher and the launch tower sits there and it moves back and forth. Now the rocket comes from all different parts of the United States and it gets assembled down at Kennedy Space Center. So I show up, boom, shadow a different engineer, learn about it. And then the next year I got really involved so it was virtual, but I was with their Razor group, which does a lot of kind of like their futuristic technologies. And so they're working on a lunar rover. And I basically was tasked with figuring out which rocket was best for that lunar rover to be to be on to, to eventually go to the moon, which is probably about to go to the moon probably around this year. So, so how do you decide? Which rocket fits that? So you're yeah. the one that goes. The next one that goes to the moon, we can. You'll be able to say, "Hey, I, I was part of the decision." Exactly. So oh. there's probably about five different rockets that are about to start being launched to the moon pretty frequently. These are all un, unmanned rockets, and so on each of these rockets, they basically um, a company can pay for a, a payload spot for their rover or their experiment to go to the moon. Right. So. Um, For me, figuring out one is taking the size of this rover, figuring out can it fit on this rocket in the capsule. And then they have all these different ways for whatever your experiment is, because it's unmanned, to be able to get off the capsule once it lands lands on the moon and be able to, boom, go around, do whatever experiments, come back, reattach itself, and come back to Earth. So it was then assessing, okay, like which one is most feasible from a cost standpoint, but also – a functionality standpoint for their rover to be attached to, to detach itself from it, go around, do its whatever mission on the moon, come back, reattach, and come back to Earth safely with everything that they're trying to learn and test. So it was 
It was very unique. It was really cool. It was really cool. Oh, my goodness. Well, I mean, I want to talk football, obviously, but I'm, I'm totally fascinated by all this because you're one of the most unique people in the NFL given your background. And it, when did you get interested in all this? Was this at a really young age or when it was when you were at Tennessee? So it started re- when I was really young. My parents, you know, growing up, I was the only child, and I got involved in a lot of things, like literally everything under the sun, like chess club, like I was in the chorus, I stink at singing, but I, I, f- I found that out pretty quickly. I had to do a, a little a solo in the fourth grade uh, for one of our uh, assemblies, and I was awful, so I, I don't sing anymore. But I was involved in a lot of things in school growing up, and I really found a love for like math, science, STEM. I love planes, like aviation is a huge passion of mine. And so just as I progressed, my parents wanted me, they're like, you should be a lawyer. You love to debate. You like to talk. You're good at speaking in front of people. But, you know, I was more on, I had the love for the math and science side and less of uh, the writing and reading. And so uh, when I went to school, um, I took a couple engineering classes in college, uh, a couple physics classes in, I mean, excuse me, in high school. And I was like, okay, what, um, two things, what am I good at and what am I passionate about? And so what's going to, if you know I can't play football forever, right. what am I going to have a career in that I really enjoy? And so aerospace engineering was the was the perfect um, combination of both. Now, when I chose it, I didn't know it was going to be the hardest major <laughs> that you can choose going to college. So I definitely, um, I definitely, you know, bit out a big big slice of pie going to school just with the course load and everything, but. I enjoyed it, man. I loved it, and it's really cool now seeing all the unique opportunities I've had off the field. In so, it. so forgive me if this is a dumb question. You're clearly much smarter than me, so it might be a dumb question. But like, is the goal eventually to go to space in some way, shape, or for form? For me to go to yes. space? Um, go to space and come back. Yeah, <laughs> go to space and definitely come back. I think, um, you know, a lot of people are like, hey, like, go to space, go to the moon, go to Mars. You know, obviously we haven't sent people to Mars yet, so we have Total Recall, yeah, it's, it's a dumb <laughs> we, movie. We man. haven't right, we haven't brought them back either. So, um, but I think at some point, you know, I think it's it's really cool seeing the amount of commercial opportunities there are yeah. in space right now. The amount of you know everyday per se people that are starting to get opportunities to go to space and become astronauts. So, it's something on my bucket list. Obviously, that's a huge decision to make. Um, but yeah, I think that'll be really cool. And astronaut you mentioned was a nickname. Is that something that's recent? Because I know it's been obviously blown yeah. up right now. Is I would say it's probably that one's probably more recent. Okay, that one's probably more recent. You know, Astro's been a big, big nickname of mine. Astro, Astro Dobbs, but Pastronaut starting to uh, get some steam. So we got to do some something fun around it. You make all this sound so easy, um, and you've made football look easy the last month. And I'm just curious, you get here. The trade happens just a couple weeks before the regular season starts. How? What was the biggest challenge, and what part of it was easy for you to transition? Yeah, I, I would say the, the football part was probably the easiest part because it was the most consistent part. Um, transition's tough, especially in this business. You know, just picking up and moving at the drop of a dime, especially when you're not aware like that that that's coming, um, is is weird and a, a unique situation. Um, But, you know, I've done it in the past. And so I'll say, like, just having to go through a similar situations, per se, in the past prepared me for this one. And so it's been really cool, like, coming here, you know, the support system that's been uh, around me here and helping make it very seamless. And it's allowed me, you know, to focus on my craft, focus on football, focus on my preparation and uh, enjoy that part of it. And so, you know, I, I've I found comfort in, you know, the unknown and the um, uniqueness of the situation. But I've found a lot of comfort in the uh, my preparation and the football side of it because it's been able to stay the same. And I've been able to kind of dish off tasks and stuff to my support group, um, especially like the Cardinals have helped me out a ton and just focus on the game and focus on preparation and going out and playing good football. What was it about this situation that when you found out about the trade that you felt good, you felt like you could succeed here because you're playing with a lot of confidence mm-hmm. right now? Yeah, I, I would say it's, it's multiple things. One, the uniqueness of working with Drew and Izzy last year in Cleveland and having a very similar offense to be able to come into. Um, two, you know, my teammates that have accepted me and um, have done a great job of putting in the extra hours to get up to speed, right? Like, you know, little things that 
you're able to work through in OTAs and camp and sh- and shoot like the first couple weeks leading up to the season. We didn't have those opportunities, so it's been a crash course um, leading to get get into the season. And so everyone's taken it in stride. I've done a tremendous job of getting up to speed with me, um, and so that's been awesome. And then three, you know, just the confidence that the coaching staff and shoot this franchise has had in me to say like, hey. You know, um, who, you know, out there in the NFL can we trade for that can give us an opportunity to go and, and win games um, each and every week? And it's a week before the season uh, for, for them to pick me out and, and get, bless me with this opportunity, man. I've just been working hard to take advantage of it, put, put my best foot forward every Sunday. Um, because, as I always say, man, there's only 32 starting quarterbacks in the world. You know, there's less than 100 quarterbacks at the professional level in the world. And so to be one of 32, to be a – uh, NFL quarterback has always been a goal, a dream of mine. And um, with that being said, you know, it's now on me to make the most of the opportunity. Well, you've done that so far. You're not just one of 32. You're in the top 10, a passer rating. Uh, you know, knock on wood, no interceptions. Uh, I know that, you know, the team didn't win this past weekend, but, you know, I've been here for 22 years. And, you know, just watching the way you guys fought and didn't give up, that 99-yard drive in particular, can you kind of take me through that and your mindset there? Because it looked, again, like guys are believing in not just what J.G. and the coaching staff are selling, but they believe in you. Yeah, you know, um, we come into halftime, right, and we felt, you know, on offense, you know, knowing who we're going against, right, we felt like we could have started a little bit faster. You know, and that's what that was said in the locker room. And so what we said to the defense was, you guys go get a stop, get us the ball back, we'll make it a one-possession game. And so defense went out, they did their job, they got a stop, uh, we get the ball back. And as an offense, our mentality is no matter where the ball is, we have the ball in our hands, and that's the opportunity now to go score. So whether it's on the one-yard line, our one-yard yard line or their one-yard line, our goal is to put the ball in the end zone. And so everyone has the great – right mentality man and that's what's been so great about this team you know everyone's just no matter what happens we're one play at a time right uh one call at a time executing that play no matter what happens on the last play boom we're on to the next one so to get the ball and then everyone look in the huddle get get the first first down get the drive started and go down score touchdown make it a one possession game obviously you know we didn't have the outcome that we wanted but i thought it was a, a tremendous growth growth moment you know as a team right just playing that complimentary football against a really good football team where defense gets a stop, then they're relying on the offense to give us a chance, boom, to get back in the game, and then we go out and execute. That's what – those are kind of the start of what good pro, good programs, good organizations, good football teams are built off of. And so we keep doing that. We keep playing good complimentary football. We keep growing on those little moments like that, man. We'll, we'll continue to improve and start winning some games. Are you this calm, direct, and deliberate – when you're in the huddle. <laughs> I like to say so. Yeah. Yeah. I like to say so. You know, I I've you know, being around other quarterbacks and then obviously just my journey, man, I've learned that consistency, you know, uh, people feed off of that. So, you know, in my preparation, man, how I show up on Wednesday and how I show up on the game day, I want it to be the exact same. Because one, you know, that helps me stay calm and focused and locked in on the task. And two, you know, your teammates see that, right? They they see how you approach every single rep. They see how you approach every single day. And then ultimately they see how you approach the game. So having like this demeanor, right, I'm being consistent in that. Now I get fiery on, on game day. Sure. I think on my mic up showed that a little bit. I, yeah. I, I changed a little bit of personality. But um, at the end of the day, man, like I, I want to be that sh- that strong, calm, consistent uh, voice and, and commander of the huddle and – um, lead, lead my guys each every time I step on the field. I know you've been asked this a ton, but Pittsburgh, Jacksonville, back to Pittsburgh, Cleveland, Detroit, Tennessee, back to Cleveland, here in Arizona. Did you doubt yourself at any point, or did you always feel like you were going to get that opportunity to show what you could do? Was it hard to stay patient for that opportunity? Yeah, you know, I never doubted myself. I would say I, 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 I gained more trust in myself. I would say that over that time. You know, when you get drafted to an organization, man, like I think everyone, they, they, they view their NFL career as the storybook career. You know, you're going to get drafted somewhere. You're going to play there for 20 years. Your jersey is going to get retired in the rafters. You're going to get a gold jacket and you're going <laughs> to ride off in sunset. And that does happen. And those stories are out there and they're, and I think those are the stories that are sold, obviously, the most because those are the stories everyone loves to see. But 
I would say, you know, 97% of the players in the NFL, that's not their story. That's not their journey. That's not the opportunities they get. And so uh, for me, man, like, you know, getting drafted to Pittsburgh and leaving and then going back to Pittsburgh, all that really wasn't uh, any of my choices. Right? I was drafted to Pittsburgh. I was then traded to Jacksonville. I was then claimed back by Pittsburgh. Um, and so from there, you know, after that year, going going to my fifth or sixth year, you know, I said, like, at the end of the day, man, I got to start positioning myself with the opportunity, one, to show I can at least be a consistent two in the league, which will then ultimately give me the opportunity to be a starter in the NFL. So, you know, a lot of my moves and transitions that have happened over the last year have been, you know, me just putting that ultimate trust in my own skill set and ability and the ability to be able to perform on short notice. Um, so, you know, leaving Cleveland was a choice of mine because while I was in Cleveland, man, going into that situation, knew it was going to be a unique quarterback room with three new guys signed all in the same year. And obviously with the uh, Deshaun deal going on. So I knew at some point Deshaun was going to come back. I didn't know what the room was going to look like. So I ultimately chose to leave Cleveland because I knew like, hey, like crazy things happen at the end of fo- the football season. And I want to show teams that, you know, I had a really good preseason I can play really good football, and I'm looking for that opportunity to play. Um, so ended up going to Detroit and then getting signed from Detroit to Tennessee to go play. So everything worked out because I had that trust and confidence in myself. And then obviously coming here, same thing, you know, having that confidence in yourself that even though it's short notice, you can still go out, execute, play really good football. Um, and it might be a unique situation, but everything shoot that I went through the last 365 yeah. days has prepared me for this opportunity. So. Um, I wouldn't say, you know, throughout throughout that that time period, I ever, you know, lost faith in myself. Now, of course, you might lose faith in the process, right? There are some days you wake up and say, dang, am I ever going to get that chance? But in those days, man, I think those days are what make you, right? Those are the days that when you wake up and you might lose faith in the process, but you haven't lost faith in yourself and you still show up, you still are a professional, you still do your job at a high level, you still prepare as if you're going to start, even though you're not even dressing on that Sunday. Those are the days that are banked reps that then ultimately prepare you for opportunities like this. So it's been a tremendous journey, tremendous ride. It's definitely uh, far from over, man. But um, yeah, I mean, I've loved every step of the journey. Well, I was going to ask you, you know, what you think your role is because – you know, there's no givens in the NFL. First of all, we don't know when Kyler's coming back and, you know, how he's going to do when he comes back. I mean, you keep playing like this. You know, there's no guarantees that Kyler steps right in. So, like, how do you view it? Do you kind of, like, look at yourself and say, you know, if I keep playing like this, I'm going to make it a tough decision for the coaching staff to take me out of the game when Kyler gets healthy? For sure, yeah. I just, you know, I, I control what I can control, right? Like, as I said last week, you know, I know at some point Kyler's going to come back and decisions are going to be made. And, you know, for me, I understand that, and I understand his role and, and the role that he's had in this franchise up until this point, and I respect that. And so, as I said last week, like, everything's going to be okay, man. Uh, but I control what I can control, and, you know, as long as they tell nine to keep going out there, keep leading this team, keep playing quarterback, I'm going to go out and put my best foot forward. And the day that role changes, I'll embrace whatever that role looks like, and I'll keep moving forward and still being Josh Dobbs, still being the sure. person – um, that I am. So, you know, yeah. So whenever that day comes, man, it'll, it'll, it'll be okay. But until then, man, I'm, I'm putting my best foot forward, trying to lead these guys to victory every Sunday. Can you talk about your relationship with, with Drew Petzing? You know, how much do you guys talk during the week about the plan? How much are you talking during the game? For example, I brought up the 99 yard drive. Like to me, the, the first play of that drive, nobody remembers or talks about, but like you just diving ahead for three yards to give you guys a little bit more breathing room. Not a lot of teams do that, or at least the Cardinals hadn't done that the last couple of years. Um, how much com- how much discussion, how many conversations are you having with Drew throughout the weekend on game day? We're having a ton of conversations, man. We talk, shoot, starting yesterday about the past game, how, how we can improve, and then today we're on to uh, the Bengals and talking about first and second down st- thoughts, getting a head start on that. So then we come in on tomorrow and – wrap up that, start on third down. So each day it's a discussion about a different part of the field, different zone on the field. And then as we get closer to game day, it's more situational football thoughts and starting thoughts, how we're going to start the game, what we're going to do on the big third downs, what we're going to do in the red zone. And then, you know, once we get in the game, the dialogue continues, right? Like I have a ton of dialogue with Izzy throughout the week uh, for the most part, obviously, because he's in the room. Um, And then Drew comes down and we talk as well. 
So the relationships grow, man. The you know, obviously I spent time with Drew last year. I didn't play, but we spent a ton of time together. And I think, you know, just being able to talk football last year for me to be able to pick his brain uh, when he was in the position as the QB coach and now for him to grow into the role as the OC, those reps have helped us a ton this year. You know, when he calls plays, I feel like, you know, I know exactly what he's about to say as he's calling them into the huddle. And so as we continue to get reps together, as the weeks continue to go by, that those the relationship, right, the um, camaraderie per se, but the chemistry will just continue to grow. And so it's, it's, it's been great to see the steps that we've been able to make each and every week, just starting from week one, man, that feels like a year ago that sure. I got here. Yeah. And so it only shows the steps that we'll continue to make throughout the year. It, it seems like Monty Asenfort and JG, they have a specific type of person that they want here as well as a player, that there's more that's going into who's on the roster uh, as opposed to just picking talent and picking players. Michael Wilson, you fit exactly the, the mold of what Monty and JG want. Michael Wilson seems like another guy. He actually kind of feels like a wide receiver version of you. <laughs> Smart guy, went to Stanford. Yeah. Uh, both very good college players. He's a third-round pick. You were a fourth-round pick. Um, talk about your connection with him and what you've seen from Michael so far. Obviously, he had, had a huge game this past weekend. He had a great game. That was really cool for him to be back in the Bay, obviously right down the street from school and ball out. Um, the relationship's been awesome. Like He's been a guy since the day I got here. I think it was probably the first guy that came up and introduced himself in the lunchroom right when I walked in. But he's always you know, picking my brain from a QB perspective of, hey, like what can I do better? Or, hey, let's get an extra rep on this. And then from there, you know, he's just so locked into the game plan and always, you know, doing the right things exactly where he needs to be. Obviously, he's a great dude off the field. And so just seeing um, that having, you know, that safety blanket as a quarterback is awesome. You know, as you said, he's a great dude. And, you know, I think guys like that are are tremendous opportunities to continue to build the team culture and, and chemistry around. And so. Um, I enjoy, obviously I've loved the way he's played. He's made some huge plays. Obviously the Dallas game with the big play to put us in position to seal it, and then last week with the two touchdowns and a couple other big time catches and big situations to put us in position to score. So it, it's been tremendous seeing his growth. Like when he, when he showed up, I was watching some of the camp film and just watching. I was like, "Who's this dude?" And like, <laughs> "Oh, that's that's the rookie." And I was like, "Wow, he looks like a second, third year player already." Yeah. And so he'll continue to grow and improve, man, but he's been awesome, and so I'm excited for him and his career. Another guy that looks like he's been in the league for a while, um, and he's playing a position that I don't think he played a ton of at Ohio State, Paris Johnson, Mm -hmm. mostly left tackle, playing right tackle. What stands out to you about him and how he's played so far? Man, he's had the gauntlet of of guys to block already this season, man. That's That's probably been what's been so impressive, right? Like, um, shoot, he's had he's had a, a a slate of guys thrown at him, starting with the Commanders and the front that they have, and then the Giants have a really good front. Then obviously eleven, uh, Michael Parsons with the Cowboys, and then last week Nick Bosa, and so he'll continue having more guys that that he'll be tasked with blocking. But he's stepped up to the challenge every single week. He has that right demeanor, that confidence in himself, and you know, just when you come in as a come in as a as a different as a new quarterback. Um, and having your alignment look at you and get you hyped to go out and go out and play and, and take over games, man, that's that's a great feeling. So he d- he does a tremendous job. It's really cool seeing his relationship that he's already created with DJ on the other side. Obviously, DJ's played uh, a lot of football yeah. and a, at a very high level. But just seeing how he's learning from DJ and how to take care of his body, what to do off the field, getting into his routine – as a rookie, man, that that's very impressive. Just you know, being around the around the league and seeing guys, man, he's he's acting like similar to Mike as a vet, you know, already as a rookie and learning the right ways to take care of his body off the field in order to then go out and prepare and play high level football on Sundays. A couple more, we'll get you out of here, Josh. You, you've always you've never shied away from bringing awareness to alopecia, something you've dealt with since I, I think you were third or fourth grade. Yeah, right? third grade, um, and. and just tell me about why you're passionate about making people aware yeah. of that. You know, it's, it's just part of my journey. And so everything that's part of my journey, man, I always love bringing attention to it. Obviously, having alopecia since the third grade, my journeys look different than some people with alopecia. For those of you who don't know, alopecia is an autoimmune disease that attacks your hair follicles. Some people, their hair is patchy. Some people have no hair. Some people have a lot of hair. It affects everyone differently, but... 
usually at some point you, you start losing your hair and it never really grows back. Um, so for me, you know, that happened in college where, you know, I lost my hair, didn't really grow back. And being a Division One quarterback, a really good Division One quarterback at a, a very prominent university, you're in a lot of spotlight. So um, you get a lot of attention. And sometimes people don't know what alopecia is. Sometimes people are very ignorant to what alopecia is. Mm -hmm. And that comes with the platform. So for me, just to be able to you know, show people that no matter what you're going through, everyone's going through something. Alopecia is a little more visual than other things that people go through on a daily basis. But no matter what you're going through, man, just be true to who you are. Be yourself. Have that confidence in yourself and just control what you can control. Um, I'm a huge advocate for that. The, the kids that I've met that have alopecia, the adults that I've met have, that have alopecia, it's been tr tremendous seeing the looks on their faces when they meet someone else just with alopecia. You know, not me being an NFL quarterback or a college quarterback, just me being someone else that relates to them, that knows exactly what they're going through in their hair journey per se, but also is extremely confident in my own skin and showing them that, you know, if they can, they're if they're confident in their own skin, man, they they can define their own success in their in life. And so, yeah, alopecia has been a great part of my journey, man. It, it's molded me into who I am today, and so I definitely don't shy away from it. Was there anybody in particular? Uh, I read a story where you got a chance to meet Charlie Villanueva, a former mm -hmm. NBA player. Um, anybody specific that uh, that you recall that encouraged you when you? You know, need an encouragement. Yeah, um, you know, I have a tremendous support group with my with my family. Um, Charlie's been awesome, man. He always says, you know, alopecia doesn't have me. I have alopecia, and that just talks about just being comfortable in your own skin and accepting, you know, that alopecia is a part of your story. Ryan Shazier is also one who I spent a lot of time with in Pittsburgh, and so just being around those those people, those individuals, those highly successful individuals that also may face the same ignorance sometimes that I've gone through, but still are able to stand up and and, and take it in stride and still be true to who they are. Um, it, it just has always served as a great example for me of how to proceed about my life. Well, listen, it's been great uh, covering your games here uh, as a starting quarterback. And I, not only are you one of the best stories on the team, you're one of the best stories in the NFL right now. So congratulations on the great start, and uh, let's keep it going this weekend, Josh. Let's do Thanks it. Thanks for the time, man. I appreciate you, my man. Thanks for having me. You got it.